Minecraft but good graphics and dinosaurs. You won't get blown up, but you will be devoured. You won't get shot, but you will 100% get shredded to pieces. To even have a chance to survive on the Ark Survival Evolved Crystal Island DLC, I'll need to tame powerful companions. Wait, there are even dragons in this game? I gotta catch them all. My inner Poker Master is urging me to continue with the video, so I'll just quickly ask you to subscribe. Oh shit. I put 100 hours in this game back in 2017, and that Spinosaurus could probably gobble me up with one bite. I got the heck away from there and followed my Minecraft instinct. With my brand new stone hatchet in hand, I searched for a safer area. As you can see, you can't see in the night. So I just gathered resources and hoped the Spino wouldn't wander towards my direction. You get to unlock crafting recipes and better physical abilities the more levels you gain. The farming I had done through the night allowed me to unlock basic armor and the caveman stick. After crossing a river, I finally reached the beach. Here, there's only a slightly lower chance that a T-Rex would pull up on my base and annihilate me. On day 3, I got myself a little shack and went out to hunt innocent dodos for their hide which I used to make a bed. I also cooked the bird meat and got myself some storage. On day 5, the urge of my inner Pokemaster overcame me and I abducted an innocent Pteranodon by punching him into submission. I only realized afterwards that he was only level 20 and the max level is 150. Huh. But I had already knocked him out, so I decided that he could still be, I don't know, used as a meat shield. Any thoughts of exploring the island further were squashed when I saw raptors going ham on a stegosaurus near my base. Instead, I went on an IKEA trip to turn my thatch shack into a wooden house. On day 7, the Pteranodon finally tamed and I added an escape route in case a T-Rex would still spawn. By grinding up rotten meat and narco berries in a mortar and pestle, I made some tranquilizer, which is way more effective at knocking out dinos than clubbing them. Too bad that I didn't have it on me when a level 135 Pteranodon decided to drop by. To vent my frustration, I went on a killing spree with my newly unlocked bow. I used the hide I got from that kill to make a furnace that could smelt iron and a smithy with which I can yes. now craft a crossbow. Now I can knock out this supreme level 145 Pteranodon with only a few shots. I tried the same knockout method on this horse, but to tame it, you have to form a deeply emotional bond and I'm more of a T-Rex person anyway. I sh** my pants on day 12 and put the perfectly round feces in a chest. I think I might need to see a psychiatrist. When I came back to check up on the Pteranodon I knocked out, I spotted this raptor. I wasn't about to be pushed around anymore, so I decided to face the raptor head on. If he was part of a pack, I would be dead. Luckily, it turned out to be a loner and I successfully landed the bowler and tranquilized him. Honestly, I kind of forgot about the poor guy because my supreme Pteranodon was close to waking up. Despite the sudden heat wave, I continued gathering narco berries to keep the Pteranodon unconscious. But eventually, I succumbed to the heat. Now that the Pteranodon had been cared for, I tried to keep the raptor unconscious, but I couldn't endure this random heat event. I also didn't have the privilege of a third respawn attempt, because bad respawns have a cooldown. I tried to get a random spawn near my base, but I am by no means ready for the world outside of the beach yet. Eventually, I just respawned at the bed again. Luckily, the Pteranodon hadn't been eaten by the raptor, so I quickly got him home, got my stuff and captured the raptor again. Thanks to him being hungry from being knocked out for so long before, he tamed what? within seconds. Having a mount like her will definitely increase my survivability by leaps and bounds. I named the high level Pteranodon Lightning McQueen and the raptor Sabrina. On day 16, I followed my passion of collecting big poop balls and putting them into sacrifice, my low level Pteranodon. I also tried to knock out a level 100 Triceratops, but I forgot to put my animals on passive mode, so they wiped him out. This incident led me to build a pen, into which I could lure wild dinos and tranquilize them. The plan worked surprisingly well, and I trapped the Stegosaurus. The only problem was that the guy was eating Trank arrows like Cheerios, so I had to beat his meat. 
I beat his meat so hard for the entire night, but he still didn't collapse under my assault. So I had to gather berries and finish him the conventional way. A female, level 130 Pteranodon, decided to drop by the house, which means that 1. Her name is Sally, and 2. I will need a sectioned off perimeter so she can spend some quality time with McQueen, if you catch my drift. I really don't know why I tamed this Parasaur. Maybe because it was high level? I do know that I never went back to pick it up again. On day 23, I went hunting with Sabrina. When I came back, the Stegosaurus finally tamed and I named her Cardi B because she is slow AF and kind of thick. It's so easy to gather narco berries for trank arrows with Cardi B now, which means that we will soon be able to tame larger beasts. My inner Pokemaster had been bugging me to tame the Spinosaurus from day one, so I set off to find him. In this game, the role of hunter and hunted can change quickly. Oh, what the... I decided to play it safe, hope that my raptor doesn't die and bring Cardi B. Her fed butt is so slow that it took me a day to find and kill the raptor. Luckily, Sabrina was still alive. With the experience points from this short exploration, I unlocked the Pteranodon saddle and took to the skies with Lightning McQueen for the first time. After nearly falling prey to a basilisk, I eventually found crystals that I used to craft a spyglass. For the next two days, I just explored and enjoyed this beautiful map. It's also about time to leave the stone ages behind and for that reason I need lots of iron. While farming I also knocked out this high level turtle for no other reason than that it is high level. I wanted to use the stones I had farmed until now to improve my house but realized that I might have a chance to tame a Spinosaurus if I built a bigger stone trap. The concept had already worked with a Stegosaurus. I just needed to scale it up. I had to carry all the building materials in two batches, but I finally finished on day 40. Just as I wanted to blast arrows at the Spinosaurus, this happened. Oh, what? What are you? What are you? I decided to ignore the unconscious little guy for now and instead focus on the beast that was only a few meters away. That brain dead Spino just had to pick that exact moment to attack a Brontosaurus. I could just watch in horror as the Spino got beaten into a pulp and I froze to death. I couldn't go out of this situation without gaining anything, so I ran back, took Lightning McQueen and killed both of the heavily wounded enemies. This was a setback, but I will eventually tame the Spino. After restocking my narcotics, I went back only to find a pack of decently leveled raptors. I had already built a trap, so luring them into it without getting pulled off my mount was my main concern. Just to be sure, I gathered wood and made a platform that I could safely land on. I unfortunately didn't have enough trank arrows to tame all of them, but at least I got the two highest level ones. On day 47, one of the Brontos trampled over my tames in an attempt to get revenge, but the door frames luckily protected him. I eventually plan on having a whole raptor pack where only the fittest can survive and mate. Speaking of mate, the mate of the male raptor died when I decided to attack the Bronto that had trampled over my tames. Because he's now the highest leveled raptor, I've named him Pack Leader. I told him that he should follow the Sigma grind set, not mourn the loss of his mate and instead make an inspirational Instagram post. When I came back to tame the micro raptor I had knocked out previously, I discovered a high level Carno instead. By now I had the trapped and tranquilized method down to a T. I also stumbled into my old friend, the micro raptor. I just gave him a good old whack and this time he wouldn't get away from my loving arms. I hadn't realized it until then, but Lightning McQueen was now strong enough to take a Bronto by himself. The prime meat I got sped up both taming processes significantly. The Microraptor finished taming first and I named him Chicken McNugget because he's a chicken and he's small. After seeing the insane stats of the new Carno, I had to name him Thomas the Tank Engine. And Thomas certainly proved worthy of his name, as he just steamrolled one dino after another. I could luckily stop him from killing this level 140 scorpion and successfully knocked out the scorpion when he got caught up in some trees. The jungle didn't have worthy enemies for Thomas, so I went on a short expedition into the desert, but even they couldn't provide any resistance. 
resistant. After dying to a random temperature drop, I got back to base with my newly tamed scorpion. Now that I felt somewhat safe with Thomas around, it was time to start Operation Inza. Um... I mean breeding Lightning McQueen and Sally. I put them into a wooden trap to grant them a modicum of privacy. Sally laid an egg on the following day and I set up a very primitive breeding ground. I spent day 60 just watching over the egg to keep it at 69 degrees. Although the baby stats didn't turn out the way I wanted, I wanted a fast and enduring flyer. He was impressive nonetheless, mainly because of his rid ridiculous melee damage. This is also the reason why I named him Machine. My trash Pteranodon, Sacrifice, laid an egg as well. To drive home the point that she would get none of Lightning McQueen's tea, I ate her egg right in front of her. On day 62, I dipped my toes in the water for a while to see whether I could acquire a water dino. What the f is that? Do you guys see that? Do you see that? That enormous tail? Holy I shit. decided to postpone my exploration of the sea and instead went on a walk with Thomas. I also tamed this decently leveled raptor near my house for my raptor pack. While Thomas was pretty much invincible against all sorts of scorpions and vultures etc, I was not. Then I remembered that I'm still wearing the starter armor because I was too lazy to craft flak armor. Just as I got my stuff back, I spotted a level 90 T-Rex. You can be sure that I made a big circle around the guy. I tediously farmed stones and metal by hand for a couple of days and realized that if I ever want to renovate my base fully, I will need specialized dinos. My main goal now is to tame the T-Rex, one of the peak predators. What turned this already dangerous operation into a suicidal one was the fact that I had to unequip my flak armor because it was too hot. Now, one nibble from the Rex could most likely kill me. But now it was too late to reconsider, as I had already fired the first shot. Oh. Run, run, run. Are you still following me? Yes, he is! Oh, uh, uh. Fucking run, fucking run, run for your life. He is, he is definitely following me. He's definitely. <laughs> oh. oh, what? What? The fight wasn't oh. finished yet. If the Rex could break out of the enclosure before he falls unconscious, I would be dead meat. I fired shot after shot into his skull, and he continued to bite at the wall restraining him. Of the 80 arrows I had brought, there were only 30 left, and he didn't show any signs of weakening. Only 10 arrows left now? Yes! Yes! Oh, I had like 3 arrows left. <laughs> Actually, that was a mistake, but I think this name should be very fitting. <laughs> oh, this feels way too good. I might not be able to control myself from going on a rampage. Yes, run! <laughs> During my rampage, I stumbled upon this little ball who will be very useful for gathering stones. But me dying to a random heat wave postponed the hunt to day 80. The 60 arrows I had gathered until then weren't enough to tame him. Okay, not 60 arrows, because I did tame another high-level turtle. I can't just help myself. If a dinosaur has a big number above his head, my brain just goes, yes. By now, I'm really good at beating meat. So he eventually collapsed under the strain. Because my two tames were unconscious in a highly populated region, I had to stand guard. My Microraptor tried to kill a goose during one of my patrols. I took a pity on the goose and decided to tame it. But the taming process is pretty complicated. You have to kill a hostile fish, drag it out, don't die to a terror bird, don't die to a... <gasps> Whoa! What the f***? What the f***? I'm out of stamina. I can't run away. No. No. I only hit like half of my spear thrusts because of the fucking knockback. No!
No, Chick McNuggets! Chick McNuggets! <laughs> He let himself turn into ground meat to save me. At least he's now worthy of his name. And when I brought this fish that was paid for with blood to the goose, she scoffed at it and only gave me 2% taming progress. Oh, you wanna play it like that, huh? Blood for blood, an eye for an eye, my friend. Both the turtle and the Dodericos have finished taming. And look how much easier it is to gather stone now. Time to finally upgrade the base. If you are thinking right now, it's day 96. Why the frick are you getting a fabricator and an electric generator when you promise to tame a Wyvern? Let's just say that this video is more like a 150 days video. Okay. This game is addicting, please help. I decided to give taming ocean dinos another try. But anytime I try to passively tame a dolphin, there would be either a megalodon or a manta ready to rip out my heart. By using my turtles as bait, <laughs> I am so sorry turtle, I was eventually able to knock out one of the megalodons constantly harassing me. If I were to leave my new shark tame in the sea without protection, he would be constantly bullied by wild sharks for having an owner. So I went on another farming spree to build my new shark an underwater pen. I just couldn't bear to lose his loving smile. When I wasn't building, I would be running around the beach trying out the new rifle I had unlocked. Let's just say that that is why I didn't realize beforehand that the big guy couldn't fit in the pen. Although I was by no means ready to face a wyvern, I set out to steal one of their eggs and raise it as my own. I knew that the wyverns had a den somewhere in the desert, but I first stumbled upon a griffin's nest. Although they might not look as deadly as the wyvern, they could still take me down in a couple of hits. I spotted what looked like eggs in their nest, but the griffins soon made it clear that I wasn't a welcome guest. Despite that, I lingered around the griffin nest looking for an opportunity to strike. When I took such an opportunity, I found out that you can steal their eggs. And when I went to grab a sip at an oasis, Rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy killed me. I had forgotten to place a bed in my base after renovating it, so I had to die over and over and over again until I got a good spawn. While flying back to get my loot, the wyvern's glowing wings finally revealed the location of their den. I looted my dead body as fast as I could, brought Sally back and went back to the wyvern's den. I felt like I was a mosquito, attracted by the light of a candle flame. The mosquito would be destined to burn. No, it... no. I thought that if I just flew far enough away, it would give up. But I was wrong. It relentlessly pursued the human that had dared to enter its domain. Lightning McQueen's stamina was no match for that of a wyvern. In this moment of weakness, with the wyvern circling around for another breath attack, I abandoned him. Only moments later, the red death message made everything I had just done sink in. I had just abandoned my dearest companion, my best friend. I didn't have time to cope with the loss, as I could still hear the wyvern's roar. As I felt the warm blood of a raptor assaulting me on my way back, I realized that McQueen would have wished not to die in vain. I had to try again and succeed this time. As I had experienced firsthand, there was no way that even a max level Pyranodon could outrun a low level Wyvern. The only place the Wyvern couldn't reach was the water. Their den just happened to be next to an ocean and I just happened to have tamed a shark previously. Although it saddened me, I brought Sally, McQueen's wife, with me so she could finish what he couldn't she would most likely die. Plans never work out. When I parked Joker at the beach near the den, he was shredded to pieces by a horde of electric mantas. It was a miracle that I was even able to grasp Sally's reins in time. The blood in the water below only gave me even more reason not to turn back now. I carefully scouted the backside of the mountain and found a gap in the wyvern's movement patterns. I was now in the lion's den, only meters away from the monsters that had killed my friend McQueen. I slunk around the entrance of the main cave for days, trying to find where they hid their eggs, just as I wanted to fly right into the wyvern's den in a suicidal attempt. This happened. <gasps> oh, 
Oh non Go away. That's it. Just let me go. Just let me go, please. Paid by the blood of two friends, we had secured the egg. Back at base, I set up a small hatching chamber, and after a while, the egg hatched. I named the blood wyvern Christoph, and after tens of days of nurturing, he has finally grown up to be as majestic as I had expected. Does he have like a special... Oh! <laughs> if you're wondering what I've been doing until then, Let's just say that Maschine and his mother spent some quality time in the breeding chamber. And we now have two new Pteranodons in the family. One like equals one Pteranodon in the next video.